Let's take a look at the Aegis Hammerhead. The Hammerhead is a 115 meters long ship, and its main feature are six man turrets. As the name implies, um, its silhouette, especially the front part, which is over here, resembles that of a Hammerhead shark. I'm only going to spend a small amount of time on the exterior silhouette because there's so much to cover on the interior, it would make the video too long. <clears throat> okay, let's take a look at that. Now what's interesting here, you see that cutout in the center, in the front part. Um, this, this section of the ship and this section, those are just two hallways to elongate the ship. I think to give more space between the two turret sets. Which I think is really artificial to um, make the ship longer like this. Now one interesting part about the ship's cockpit is, that it is on the underside of the ship. <clears throat> this is the cockpit which is on the underside and the ship has various entry points you have the the main airlock in the front and you have i think three different elevators leaning in from the bottom we're going to take the entrance from the airlock which also doubles as a docking column because in i think it was a dispatch they added the ship to station docking and this section of the ship docks to the docking arm of a space station. We're going to enter through this part of the ship. It has this airlock door over here, which I'm not going to open. Um, rather close. Now the first striking detail is how much more detailed the interior parts look compared to the exterior. I think that's a flaw in all larger ships that the exterior texture quality and texture resolution is a bit too low, I think, and it makes them look quite bad from the outside. However, the interior of the ship makes up for it in, in all the detail. For example, you can take a look at this light over here. It even has its own encasing and screws. Like you could real walk in to integrate the light into the, into the frame of the airlock. So the light's over here. I think the lights are a bit bright and flashy, however, since it's an airlock light to signal you where you get in, I think it's appropriate in this, in this point of the ship to have a um, bright light in your face like this. Okay, let's get in. Okay. Now here's an um, airlock door that should actually close. However, I think it's bugged because of the docking, so we can close that one. Now this first room, <coughs> this appears to be the airlock, but you can actually close that door. And this is the airlock um, interior. Now the problem with that is if those things are <coughs> interior spaces to store suits, then this is a bad setup because if, imagine your airlock is broken, the outer door is defective and open, and you're on the inside of the ship and need to get to that spacesuit. Which means you can't do it because your spacesuit is in the airlock that's breached already. So I think it's a bad idea to have the airlock suits, uh, sorry, the suits for space inside the airlock. That's a bad idea, I think. Other than that, it's, I think, a beautiful room. Nice ombre lighting. Also, what's, what's really a signature feature of this ship is all the soft padding. If you like the original Nostromo designs from Alien 1979, you're going to really like what they're doing in this ship. Some nice railings to hold on in zero-g. Looks really good. Also, one word about the soundscape. This is the, the ship is currently powered on with the engines off. If the engines are on, the ship is way too loud everywhere. A lot of sound sources that make it so hard to talk, you actually have to talk really loudly to hear so. Well, uh, as you can see here, the engine sounds. Oh, sorry, what's that? That's a buzzing sound. Yeah, it's fitting. It, it's local. I think it's coming from that machine. As you go away, it gets quieter. Yeah, it sounds really good. Now, if I go to this place over here, you hear the background humming like on the Enterprise. You hear it? It's barely audible. It's really good audio design. Okay, let's take a look at the door. Pay attention to the animation. I think it opens a bit fast, but the animation quality and the sound is actually quite good. Let's check. 
you know, how it pauses at the end and then it has this hefty sound when it, the, um, the gap closes. That's really nice. Also, you might have noticed that it gets black over here. I think it stops rendering the ship interior when that thing closes to save frames. Okay, now we're on the main deck. This ship actually has relatively flat shape compared to its length. However, it actually has what we could call it three different decks. It has a main deck, it has a bridge deck below it, and it has the upper deck, which they managed to squeeze in for some reason, even though the ship doesn't look like it would fit two decks. Okay, what should we check out first? Let's check out one of the turrets. It has six turrets. I think four side turrets, one up and one below the ship. And I think, wait, a seventh one at the tail of the ship. So I think it was seven turrets. I'm going to check out one of them. Because not so much on turrets, but I just want to show you in the video how they look. So nice detail. Love the lighting. Now, what I don't like is that aluminum brushed. And it's, it looks brushed and greasy at the same time. I think a weak point in this game that the aluminum always looks bad on all ships. Inside. Now what's cool about this turret is as, as you enter it, it gets sealed over here and it's like a small capsule that extends away from the ship. So in your own sealed space you don't have to wear a spacesuit to actually use the turret. Here you go. I do have track IR installed, so I'm going to activate it now so to give you a better look. <coughs> Okay, track IR on. Calibrating. Okay. I'm not going to go into the specifics of, of the turret. Turning it on. What's really cool about turrets on the ship, you can't feel it, but I can feel it with the mouse. There's some slew delay, which means you can feel the, the weight of the turret, the inertia, as you move the mouse around. It's really good rotation angles. Look from the outside. It should be in. Oops. It should be in the upper left turret. As you can see, it's extended away from the ship. That's where I'm at right now. Okay, now it's moving. <clears throat> now I'm not too happy with the texture quality on on the turret. It's a bit too greasy in here. I can actually remove the tracker. Too much grease and the texture resolution is quite low. So compared to the rest of the ship, the quality of this cockpit in terms of texture quality and material definition is actually quite low. However, it's still a lot better than turrets and other ships. I need to look behind in tracker and see if somebody's behind me. One of the key points in the ship is the really elegant color selection they have. They have this, um, these, this desaturated grays and browns and greens and some highlights with orange. And I think it's really subtle and I think it's the best color scheme, I think, of all the ships right now in the game. You hear beautiful material definition. You hear the orange highlights and the gray plating. Or is it rubber? I can't tell. In other parts of the ship, the ground like this actually has a more glossy um, quality to it. Let's take a look at the bridge. Beautiful, beautiful door quality. So that's one. It should open a bit slower for such a massive door. Now, this is one of the best elevators in the entire game. Look at this. Look at this detail. Beautifully integrated. The way it mounts to the uh, I think the hydraulics that move it. And it has a backup ladder integrated into the elevator shaft. And some beautiful detail. Look at this. You have this. this um, uh, is it an octagon, hexagon structure? Oops. And nice carbon patterning below it. Like that's what I like about, like about the ship. It has, <clears throat> it has great detail even in places you're not looking, which I think makes it stand out among other ships in this game. Okay, let's take a ride down. 
pay attention to the animation, the sounds of it. Beautiful. That's exactly how it should move. It starts accelerating, it then starts decelerating before you just I'm liking this though. The avionics panel you can't use yet. Really good detail, small decals that indicate what the dangers are of it. Also, it has a lot of um, good texture resolution. You can see even see the smaller details in it. The cockpit. Now, what I don't like right away from this cockpit is I don't like those dentist chairs hanging from the ceiling and that there's no real dashboard that your character is surrounded by. That's the classic RSI ship setup, so I'm not liking this part. Well, the rest of the cockpit has some strikingly beautiful detail, as you can see here. What I don't like about this section is that everything appears to be the same material. Same reflectivity, same dry up. You should break it up a bit, like, for example, make this a type of plastic instead of metal. Like they did with a, with a pipe that looks like some, some fabric Kevlar type of setup. Also, it has a classic for RSI and Carax, um, that really wide canopy where you can walk onto. I think it's too much. You could maybe cut it off a bit and make it more compact, like just to go up to this point. Oh, it can be forgiven on this ship because of its unique shape. Check out the cockpit. Really intricate detail the way the MFDs move. I'm gonna switch tracker on again. Calibrating. Okay, let's take a look. Now, what I really don't like is the flashlight in your face up here. It's a beautiful light, but it shouldn't shine in your face, especially in the cockpit. That, that's really distracting. Like, if you don't use track IR, you have a fixed view like that. But if you use track IR and you move around, then you constantly get the flashlight in your face. So that, that's a bad thing. Really liking that console. Good detail. I'm not liking the font over here. Wait a minute. I could just lean in the track IR. Yeah, it says auto and trim. That font is barely readable. It doesn't look good. Also, what looks bad is that, as I said earlier, the lack of a dashboard, you just have those flimsy MFDs in the corner of your screen. It feels a bit too much like they're trying to game design the cockpit, so it's a convenient gameplay thing instead of a realistic cockpit. And I think functionality, for make it look realistic, should be the guiding, should be the guiding thing in, the, in designing it. Other than that, I think it's one of the best cockpits in terms of detail. Again, flashlight in your face, that's bad. Yeah, not much else to say here. It's a nice cockpit. And yeah, it should have a proper animation where the character just slides into the chair instead of this toilet sit down, sit up to animations. That's a big problem for me in this game, that for most cockpit seats, they just have this one animation where the character slowly turns around and sits down like on the toilet. So they can so they can avoid having to manually fit animations for each seat. But I think they should do it. That's production value. That should be in the game. Okay, uh, that was the cockpit. <clears throat> Left and right side hallways of the ship, they're basically mirrored. There are component rooms and some EVA suits, um, I think. No, escape pod rooms, rather. And they are mirrored on both sides of the ship. So if I go down this hallway, I'll do mostly the same thing as the other side of the ship. Only the center section between the hallways um, is actually asymmetric. Okay, that, that cabin is detailed. looks beautiful. Yeah. Not much to say here. It looks wonderful. I like those railings for zero G holding on to things, I guess. It's a bit too much grease. That's a new ship. Why is it greasy like that? Oh, check out this detail. See that? That's one of the ro rotating warning lights. Look how much detail they put into it. You can see the light bulb inside and the, I think the reflector glass inside rotating with it. Look how much detail they put into one light that nobody even looks at. 
that, that production value. <coughs> Now it gets really pretty. You got these, uh, these various um, padding systems made of cloth, some type of garment material. What I really like about this is that it has a nice structure to it, good normal mapping. Also, the dirt map on it is not that splotchy grease like on metal. It actually has those has those little chippy um, splotches of whatever stains that appear on it. And the writing is slightly abused on it, it's really good. And the way they fitted it is amazing. They even fitted it around the frame of the window. Yeah, I wish there were more ships with, with designs like that. That's, I think that type of padding, it looks super amazing. And here's the, the central uh, cutout that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. This entire hallway on this side, this side is basically just here to elongate the ship by probably 20 meters. I think it's kind of cheap, but it can can be forgiven in some way because the ship is such a high quality. On this side, it looks a bit more disappointing. Um, here, texturing is really flat, and the dirt map is a bit lower. It doesn't look good. They should make the materials a bit more interesting on the left side of this hallway. Okay, now this is one of the elevators leading outside. I'm not a fan of elevators that lead outside. Because if you do it, It's really nice for an elevator, but it sucks as an airlock because there's no airlock around it, nothing. It's just an elevator leading outside. What they should do is add some type of glass box, some framed in area over here that you can enter and then you can manually press to cycle the airlock to decompress it and then another button to actually go down with the elevator. So there's a two button system where you consciously have to decide to cycle out of an airlock instead of just pressing down. Because in real, real life there would be a huge safety hazard by accidentally pressing elevator button and going outside. And the same elevators on the other side of the ship exactly mirror. Okay, let's take a look. <clears throat> What's really not good is that, you see that vent on the top here? The headspace is really low if you play male character. You're really close to bonking your head into it. You see the ground over here has a more plastic quality to it as a, compared to the beginning of the ship. I think they increased the uh, reflectivity of it. It looks like. <coughs> this, is, this is the turret axis and the escape pods. Again, the exact same room exists on the other side. I think the lighting is, is good, but it's a bit too orange in this room. And that light fog is plaguing the ship. See here, that light fog is a bit too much. <coughs> Let's take a look at the escape pods. Lighting is a bit flat. They look good, but lighting is too flat. Also, the padding looks a bit too flat. It should be a bit chunkier, like, like here's over here. And here's another turret, which I'm not going to enter because it's mostly the same object as the other side. Hear that soft hum? That's some really good audio design. Nice pipe. I think they recently started adding those cloth materials and pipes into the game. And they really add to the, to the quality of it. You got some component housings which you cannot open yet. Really good texture resolution. You can tell the texture resolution quality by how, how crisp uh, the dirt and damage looks on it. I think it's really good. Is it some really good resolution for such lighting? Oh, what's that? Oh, component. Oh. Yeah, this looks beautiful. You have this uh, circular door, bulkhead door, and you have even the, the fat padding that you know, curved around it. It's really beautiful. Again, another component housing. Now here, you notice the lighting is much better in this room. It has a good contrast. It is one dominant light source, and it's not too many lights in your face. And it's more neutral white. It's not um, like here. It's a bit too muddy. Pretty large components in here. It's a bit of filler, just random 
Thank you, Matt. I'm not going to touch that. <clears throat> so the same component room again exists on the other side. The entry to the crew quarters, which I'm going to enter after we circle back from the other side of the ship. A beautiful background humming. That sounds just right. As you notice, most of the ship is actually just hallways connecting the rooms. However, they're really beautiful hallways with a lot of craftsmanship in them, so it, I think it makes sense in this ship to have these, uh, I'll call it lavish um, hallway systems around all the rooms. Okay, I guess that's the engine room and cargo, main cargo area at the same time, I think. The main feature of this room is that it's really noisy. Those thick engines, flashlight in your face again, and particles you can inhale and get some kill like this. But they should really shield that with something because, yeah, flashing lights in your face again is bad. I don't mind the audio sound if you're that close to the engine. Maybe it's a bit noisy, but maybe it's supposed to be like that. Again, the elevator, beautiful elevator, bad elevator. Nice. Really good sound, it moves really slow, it accelerates slowly and it decelerates when it gets low. Again, this place, like the other elevator, should have a glass box with a separate airlock integrated into it. So there's some hermetic ceiling between the outside and the inside. There's some nice cranes up here. Maybe that's for some later gameplay where you can hoist things into the ship. <coughs> also, check out the cables. Okay, there should be the engine room. Now this is the access to the second floor, which I'm going to get to in a moment. It's also a room for, I guess, storing PDA sets. Which is good in this place because it's not in an airlock, it's actually in this inside the ship. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier, this entire hallway system up to up there is mirrored. It's the same as the other side, so I don't have to review it again. Let's take a look at the crew quarters. Yep, that looks good. Consistent colors like in the rest of the ship. Muted grays, muted greens, some orange highlights. But the orange highlight is not, is not over overwhelming like in law where, where everything is orange or yellow or something. Consistently good detail with the padding cut out and fitting into the place. And having some slight irregularity to it. I think that's important. It makes it look actually a lot more. Yeah, I like that neutral white lighting. It looks really good. <coughs> As for the bedding themselves, um, yes, nice bunk beds. What I don't like, again, flashlight in your face. And th that light looks kind of depressing. It's like some weird depressing, what is that, even? dirty yellow, desaturated brown. Really, really depressed orange, I'm not sure. They, have, they should remove that fat light in your face. I presume those are going to be lockers. You can't open it. Now, what I don't like is that this has a mirrored restroom system. Like this door is mirrored on the other side over here. And it's the exact same room, just mirrored. Now, the contents of this room is a sink and two. Um, I think some toilets are probably. But actually, not toilets, they're just bath. Um, showers, rather. But I think if you have eight bunk beds, I think two showers should be enough. Not sure how it would work on real life on a container ship or something, but I think that second duplicated room is just wasted space. They had to fill with something. They should have put like an extra locker for guns or something in it instead of doing that. Oh, really liking this part. It cuts out like this. Again, the font is absolutely terrible. I hate this one. It's like some messed up consolas font from the future, but even more messed up. And the buttons, I think, are way too big. <clears throat> Any nice struts? Having nice struts. Okay, now we got the crew compartments. No? Nothing on the other side. 
interesting here. We have another turret, that's the top turret. And the captain's quarters, because the captain get, gets his own quarters, which is really cool on the ship. And I really like that entryway. It's not just a copy-paste, that circular door, which would have looked nice, but they went through the trouble of making this another type, type of look. And that detailed pattern from earlier, with the green tint to it, gives it a more important military look. Neutral white lighting looks really good. Looks not perfect, but it looks good. I think the lighting, um, the light fog is a bit too much. Looks dusty, it shouldn't be like that. Right off the bat, brushed aluminum doesn't look good. Nice glass. Really nice padding, the way it fits in, around the other things irregularly. Beautiful. Ceiling detail. Strong neutral white lighting from the top, looks really good. <coughs> Oh, anything else to say about this one? It would be nice if the bookshelves, there would be an option if you have the ship, so you can delete the preset stuff, so you can put your own things in it, like as an option. Because I think those preset items you can't interact with, they um, kind of takes away from the immersion. Oh, I like that. Look at that inset detail over here. Get some floor lighting. It's amazing about the ship. It has really good detail in places you don't even look. Look at this. Fine grating in here. See, they could have went with, with some cheap ass texture and do it like that. In all that detail. <coughs> and he has his own sleeping quarters, as he should have as a captain. Hmm? Looks really good. It's, it's kind of narrow and compressed, which makes it kind of look cozy and claustrophobic at the same time. There's a lot of nice padding, good lighting. You see here the lighting, highlighting that pillar. Uh, I guess that's for the clothing items. You can't interact with it yet. I'm not sure why the bed bunk has such a high ceiling. It should be maybe half as high. Kind of fits a bit too much. Okay, toilet, shower. I think it's too much ugly aluminum in this, in this game. This game has a lot of good textures, but when it comes to brushed aluminum, I think they're really dropping the ball all the time on this one. It just doesn't look right. Sink. Mm, yeah, good detail. But I think they got lazy and on the bathroom, they just slapped almost the same texture and everything, like with slight variations in it. Like they just slapped the entire room made out of chrome. I think that's a bit lazy. And you see here the toilets, again, greasy and scratched at the same time. That's basically how the mole looks from the interior, um, most of the textures. Okay, now we got the captain's quarters. <coughs> Do we cover the interior? First floor, yeah, let's check out the second floor. Second floor. Elevator has railings. Again, brushed aluminium looks really bad. They even put the time in to put the upper deck into the ship. And if they would have left it out, nobody would have noticed. But they went through that extra work to push in all that detail. Okay. That's a beautiful side. Look at this. Circular door. It's a circular, um, sorry, circular. Um, Room structure, and the door is fitted into it properly. Yep, that, that's just beautiful. <coughs> ah, come on open. Again, too much fog in the light. Really takes away from the immersion. That's really nice component housing. See, it has the, that beveling and the cloth to fit it right in. I'm actually amazed how much extra production value they put into the ship compared to other ships. Okay, that's the mess hall. It even has its own mess hall and kitchen. How amazing is that? Too much light fog, but otherwise, that's a beautiful space. Look, at this. Look how spacious it is. 
how much room it takes up, how beautiful that looks. Now imagine other ships that currently don't have real kitchens, what the possibilities are for a kitchen in, in a spaceship. Again, too much grease. Why is everything greasy in this ship? Makes no sense. Uh, not sure what that part is. And why those handles, why the handles are here, makes no sense. You should have regular um, vertical handles every two or three meters instead of that. that that's just some superfluous detail that makes no sense already. But there's absolutely no reason to be here. And that padding takes away from this place if it was supposed to be a table or a shelf or something. The detail, a bit blurry, I guess. Nice grating, yeah. Look at all that kitchen space. I mean, is it a kitchen or is it more like some cafeteria um, array thing? I've spotted some bad aluminum. Yeah, see, that's where they dropped the ball again. They just slap aluminum in. Um, yeah, that just doesn't look good. <coughs> yeah. Aluminum is, is really bad in this game. Okay, I'm liking the red lights. But they should be turned off unless it's an emergency because it, it kind of gets in your face. And it has its own ply room. Yeah, not much to say here. It's it's a bit too busy in detail. Like they think, unless that is an openable space, they should be just have a flat flat wall with more shelving. Squid, nice railings to hold on to as the orgy. Even has a skylight. Whenever there's a kitchen argument for a spaceship, um, this is the place you can refer to why it should have a kitchen. Okay, so we're almost at the end. And it's a little, I think, balcony area where you can hold up the cargo area. I think it's a really good spot for maybe having some type of crane operator where you can use the crane to get cargo from the ground. And it's a good over um, a safe um, uh, overlook to see if it's coming into your ship from the cargo space. And it gives you some extra uh, extra awareness of your ship. If you're in this space, it's elevated. You can see the entire cargo bay like this. Not sure what you can do in this place. <coughs> They recently added um, all that cloth, cloth and uh, plastic pipes and see-through glass and windshields. And I think it really adds to the look. So let's calculate the final score of the ship. Okay, for exterior shape, uh, let's see. I would give it an an eight out of ten. It's functional. It, it's original. I don't like that it kind of elongated the ship with that center cutout area. And the texture quality is a bit blurry on the outside. So I think it's not a 10 out of 10, it should be an 8 out of 10. Okay, then the cockpit experience, which is the, the way the ship uh, appears and looks and feels from when you're sitting in the cockpit in the pilot's chair. And that's actually quite weak. It has the classic RSI dentist chair from the top. It has no real dashboard, just MFDs flapping in your, in your, <coughs> in your corner. So we in the cockpit experience of five out of ten. Okay, then the interior lighting quality of the ship. I think it's almost flawless. There's a bit too much light fog in most places, and it feels a bit too washed out in areas. So it would be almost a ten out of ten, but I'm going to give it a, a nine out of ten. Okay, now interior aesthetics or looks. Yeah, I think that's it's the best looking ship on the inside in terms of craftsmanship and quality. Has some flaws, but they are made up by all the extra detail in places where you would look. So that gets a 10 out of 10. Now interior functionality, which is a score for how to describe how useful and how appropriate the interior space is, how much spaceship you're getting for what you're what you're buying. And I think I give it a nine out of ten because you get a mess hall, you get a kitchen, you get a crew quarters, you get a captain's quarters, you get so much functional space in the ship. 
Yeah, I think uh, 9 out of 10 would be justified. Okay, did I miss anything else? So the audio quality, it's mostly great, but there's some serious volume issues which I haven't seen in the video. When you turn on the engines, then the entire ship is too loud. There's some extra audio sources that fade in really fast and fade out really quick when you walk past them, and they're very noisy, like a lot louder than they should be. Probably 10 or 20 decibels of what I'm talking about. Now. So I'm giving the audio quality an 8 out of 10. The audio quality is great, it's just the volumes are all over the place. So let's calculate the average score. <coughs> <coughs> So the final score should be 8.2 out of 10. So I think that concludes the video, and as always, thanks for watching.